I remember when I was in seminary, uh, the professor who was a Calvinist was uh, teaching us the doctrine of election. There were 18 of us in a semicircle around the room, and he said, all right, gentlemen, if it's true that God from all eternity saves his elect and nothing's going to change that, why should we be involved in evangelism? And I was so grateful because I was on the extreme right end of the semicircle, and he started his interrogation on the other side. And the first guy shook his head and said, beats me. <laughs> and the second guy said, I don't have a clue. He said, that's what I've always wondered. And I started to start at the sweat because they went all the way around the room, and it finally came to me, and he said, well, Mr. Sproul, he said, what, do you, what would you say to that? And I said, well... I know this isn't the answer you're looking for. You want something far more profound. I said, but one reason, you know, one small reason we should be involved in evangelism is, after all, Jesus commands us to be. And he laughed, this sarcastic laugh. <laughs> he said, yes. He said, Mrs. Pearl, and what could possibly be more insignificant than that your Lord, the Savior of your soul, should command you to do something? Well, I wanted to crawl under the chair at that point. And, of course, as we talked about it, he also pointed out that we do evangelism not simply because we're commanded to and because we believe that God is sovereign, and part of affirming his sovereignty is obeying his sovereign command. But also, it's an unspeakable privilege. As Paul, after giving his teaching on election in chapter 9, when he moves to chapter 10, he talks, he quotes the Old Testament, how beautiful on the mountain are the feet of those who bring good tithing, tidings. God doesn't need me to round up the elect. But he gives me the unspeakable privilege of participating in this work of redemption. Plus, we are told that God not only cho chooses people to be saved, but he chooses the, not, not only the end, but the means to that end, the way in which he's going to bring them to salvation through the power of the gospel. That's the power of God. It's God's power, not mine, but it is the power of God unto salvation. And God gives me the unspeakable privilege of preaching that gospel. And that gospel, again, gets none of its power from me, from my eloquence, from my intelligence, or any of that. It's God's power. The Holy Spirit uses that word, uses the message to quicken people's souls. So, I think it's a delight for us to be able to be engaged. And it's the same thing with prayer. God uses means. He, he works through the prayers of his people. He works through the preaching of his people to bring his ends to pass. But they most certainly come to pass. I talked to a Christian leader a few years ago after a meeting that was a critical meeting, and he said to me afterwards, he says, if we hadn't had this meeting today, millions of people would have been lost. I looked at him and I said, if we hadn't had this meeting today, not one person would have been lost, you know, because their salvation is not depending on me, dependent on me. It's not dependent on any of us here, but God gives us the joy of participating in it.